Hey everybody, this is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and in this video I'm going to show you how to administer the users on your site. Now there's various reasons you might have a bunch of users on your site, you may only have yourself as a user on your site, so you may never really be in the users panel at all. But if you do have multiple users, you may at some point, for some reason, need to manage them. So we do that by, we're currently in the dashboard, and we do that by going to the users menu. When we hover over, we see three options all users, add new, your profile. You may see more options depending on if you have a plugin installed that extends the user functionality. But by default, there's only three options. And as you can see, here are the users for this website, and it's just me. Your, your website may be the same, it may be just you, or just you and somebody else who's working with you on the site. But there are other sites, like large blogging sites that put out a lot of articles every day, they may have five or ten different writers or more. So each of those writers would be a user with a different role. For me right now, I'm the administrator on the site, but one of the roles that comes built into WordPress is the writer role. And another role is the editor. So you may have a bunch of writers and an editor, and then you as the administrator. So really it depends on how big your site is and how often you publish content and things like that determine how many users you're going to have logged in. Or not logged in, but users in your user list. So if you need to add a new user, say you're having problems with your site, you need someone to help you fix something, or you want to add a writer to your site, all you have to do is click on add new. You can click on the button up here or click on the link on the sidebar. And the only required things are a username, an email address, and a password twice. And then you have to select the role of the user. The other stuff is nice to have. Say if you if you add a username, um, say the username is say you have a standard way of doing usernames. So it's the first letter of your first name and then your last name. And then we have an email. We're just going to fill out the required ones, and I'll show you something to watch out for. Very weak password. Good. So you have the option of sending the user the password, which is usually what we do, but in this case I won't because the user is me. You have the option of setting the role. By default, you would set it as a, as a subscriber but I'm going to set myself as an administrator I'm going to click add new user and then when that user is added which is it's added almost straight away if you click on edit you'll see a couple other options which the user themselves can edit um, so you don't have to worry too much about those first few options what I really wanted to show you was the display name publicly as so if this user is someone who's going to be writing on your site and say you just quickly entered the, the user information and you didn't enter a name or a last name, this field is going to default to the username that you entered. And that's bad for two reasons. The first reason is that WordPress, because it was a security vulnerability before, all the, all the usernames previously were just admin. Uh, this is pre-version 3 of WordPress. All usernames were admin. So it was really easy for hackers to go in and all they had to do was guess the password. But now with new versions of WordPress, you're able to set your username to something unique and your password to something unique. So now the hacker has to hack two fields, not just one. So it makes it twice as hard, theoretically. However, this display public or display name publicly as, if it defaults to the username and this person is writing content for your site, and like most themes, it says posted by or written by and it has their username, then the hacker, again, only has to guess one field, just the password, because they know the username. And that's the only option. If you only have the username entered and you don't have a name, first name or last name, you, you default to the username every time. But if we add a name, we can even add a, a nickname. 
gonna nickname myself Flying Eagle. Don't know why, but I did. All of a sudden, this display name publicly as the list grows a lot. And the great thing is, it doesn't include, or it doesn't have to include if you don't want to, the username. So we might want to have to have the the public name be Flying Eagle. So every post that I write, it would say by Flying Eagle. And a hacker, uh, they may be misdirected. They may think that's the username, or they will just move on because they don't think that's the username and it might be too much effort to hack the username and the password because there are a lot of websites that don't take security seriously and so they're going to find a lot of websites where they have the username displayed publicly and those would be much easier to hack. So that's something to look out for. You can add a lot of excuse me, you can add a lot of social media content a lot of these fields are updated based on the theme that you have as well. And there's some SEO settings, which is as a result of the SEO by Yoast plugin that we have. So there are plugins that change the user profile area. And when you're done in here, you can just click on update user. And if we go back to our users list, it then shows the name is Bjorn Allpass and that's the name that's displayed whenever I create a post and then it also has the username which now would only be seen internally now, a couple more things to think about with the users panel is one the first option display the visual editor when writing so what that means if we add a new post you'll see at the very top uh, above the content box we have a visual option and a text option so if we go to the visual option I'll show you the difference if we add an image real quick let's add this nice flower so in the visual editor you see the image it's visual if you click on the text editor you only see the HTML so what this option does, if you click on disable and save or update user, and then we go back to our post, refresh the page, and that didn't work because that's the wrong user. So I've got to update that for the user I'm logged in with. Let's update it for this user. and now refresh the page again now you see the visual editor is gone and this theme that, that's currently active, the Aveda theme it says the visual editor is necessary for the Fusion Builder to work so sometimes the visual is required and you may be notified as I am now that we need that so that's where you toggle the visual editor versus the text editor and there's a reason they do that, there's a reason they have that option and the reason is the visual editor sometimes breaks things I'm not going to get into it in this video because that's not the, the topic but the visual editor can break things but it's a lot easier to work with if you're not familiar with HTML and you can also change the, the admin color scheme for each user and they can go in and change the color scheme themselves so if we wanted to do sunrise it updates it live as you can see all the surroundings went red and there's ocean and there's all kinds keyboard shortcuts for comment moderation you can check this box to enable keyboard shortcuts you can look at more information about it show toolbar when viewing site so if we go to the website right now when you're logged in you will see a toolbar at the top this is the toolbar so if we uncheck that click on update profile and refresh the home page this toolbar will be gone I find that toolbar to be very handy so I keep it on it's a great way to navigate from a page to the admin area very quickly and especially using the edit page feature so if you're reading your page and there's a spelling error you can quickly click on edit page go and fix it and you're golden so as far as the default users section goes, that's about all there is to do. And like I said, there's a lot of plugins that can extend this functionality. You just have to Google them. And there's a lot of plugins that can do a lot of cool stuff in the user section. 
So I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media and check us out at wplearninglab.com where we write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.